Good morning and thanks for joining us this Tuesday morning, July 21st for live coverage of today's spacewalk from the International Space Station. I'm NASA's Leah Cheshire and this is a live feed from the space station's Quest airlock where astronauts are continuing procedures to prepare themselves and the airlock for today's extravehicular activity. This will be the 231st spacewalk in the history of station assembly and maintenance. Today's spacewalk is scheduled to begin at 6.35 a.m. Central Time. Today's spacewalkers are NASA's Bob Bankin, who is on the right of your screen in the airlock. He is EV-1, or Spacewalker-1, and he'll be wearing red stripes around the legs on his spacesuit. And his helmet com camera number is 18. Chris Cassidy is EV2 today, and he'll have on a plain white suit with the helmet camera number 20. Both astronauts have previously completed nine spacewalks, making today the 10th time both Bob Behnken and Chris Cassidy have been in the vacuum of space. NASA astronaut and commander of the International Space Station, Chris Cassidy, now being moved into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Things are progressing smoothly this morning for the start of the spacewalk. The medium are you back? Crescent. Yeah, that uh, picked in as I popped out a little bit. Push it back in. Copy and concur. And the spacewalk officially began this morning at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, 7.12 a.m. Eastern Time. That's when the astronauts switched their suits on internal battery power. There was a little bit of troubleshooting with Chris Cassidy's suit display, and they recycled the display control module. Everything is operating smoothly now as the astronauts prepare to egress the hatch. Copy, Bob. Thanks. And we'll final check that Chris is safer handles both left and right down. Chris is safer handles both left and right were visually verified they were down. That's a good hand. Copy, Bob. Thanks for that. Uh, everyone down here is ready. Your go to translate. You'll be stopping to take out both of the adjustable fair leads.
And with that, the crew has ensured all their tethers and their tools are in a good configuration before heading out to the first work site of the day. Today's spacewalk beginning at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, 7.12 a.m. Eastern. Cable all day. Copy. Copy. Okay, moving out slowly. Copy. Try not to okay. adjust the bulls, just retrieving them. Roger. Making sure I don't hit your feet. I'm oh, all. Oh, I see you. You're way clear. And my tether is clear as well. You can see there floating beside Chris Cassidy is the Ritz. Inside the Ritz, the robotics external is, or the uh, robotics tool storage is the RELs. Those are two robotics external leak locators. And Chris, we just want to make sure that uh, we heard you right, that it's already installed and locked. Uh, if that's the case, maybe give it a pull test for us. It is installed and locked. Legal, full, firmed in. I'm just going to leave my tether. I'll, uh, I just want another set of eyeballs. Sounds good. I can't tell the clocking marks, but it looks like it's in the right orientation with the with the beam. Just want you to yeah, the uh, clocking mark that I see looks aligned correctly to me. The handrail is aligned directly with this uh, piece of structure on this side, and my the, handrail too. The double line is uh, <laughs> kind of 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise from the width. The line that I can see. Yeah. It looks like it's in that proper orientation to me. Me too. It's the width 5 and width 15 lines. It's a little bit yeah. deceiving out here at night. And to me, this looks like exactly the orientation that they're looking for. Yeah. And the uh, and cables agree? are, as I agree, locked. Do we agree locked? Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to release my tether if you guys concur. Agree with releasing your tether. It's locked. Okay, tether's released. Fully installed. On uh, EVA number one connector, there was a little bit of a short bend radius coming off the 90 degree connector. Just loosen that up and uh, have that and WB miss. I think uh, survey's complete. Copy, Chris. We see the bend. We saw the bend, and we concur. And the bend radius on the BVA2 side is uh, phenomenal, looks good. All right, I think I captured it with the camera pro and on my camera. Copy, Chris. That uh, about wraps up. Ritz will take a glove hop and gauntlet from you at this time. Half dry, gauntlets in place, gloves. Pristine, no change. And you probably need a gauntlet inspection from me. Both gauntlets are at desk. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Chris, with that, you'll be picking up the medium or U bag and heading out to your next work site. H fix. Roger. Roger that. Or U bag, H fixtures. That's correct, and as a reminder, we'll stop at the anchors for Chris and just take a confirmatory on the hooks and locks there. We're 
looking on the uh, or you bag. Copy, Chris. Crew members are currently about 15 minutes ahead of schedule. They're now heading to the H fixtures where they will be doing the removal for future power system upgrades. Okay, fine. On 3061, gate closed. Locked. Copy, 3061, closed and locked. Three zero six zero, go Bob, closed and locked. Copy, 3060, closed and locked, and proceed out to your green hook location, 2110. 2110. Good words. to be in similar shape to when I parted the airlock. The flap remaining on the index finger that uh, we didn't uh, re-trim because it was mostly adhered. And on the right side, it was in uh, pristine condition. Something different between my left hand usage and my right hand usage. Copy, Bob. Uh, good checks. We'll start up with the cleanup of the IA, and if you want, you could also place any adjustables, the fair lead adjustables that you picked up earlier, if you wanted to now, you could put them in the crew lock bag. Okay. I did uh, drop one at the medium ORU bag, and so I just have the, the one at this point and uh, go from there. So I'm already at the uh, one side of the IEA, so I think I'll go ahead and take the gap spanner here and then uh, work from here with the uh, gap spanner to get it stowed in the crew lock bag to start. Bob, we concur with that uh, order, your discretion, just looking to clean up both gap spanners and four scoops. Okay. All right, I have the uh, GoPro on structure, one handrail away from 2110. I can get you the number in a second. I'm working on my uh, hook on 2110. Copy, Chris. We concur, and we think uh, we'll we retrieve the second gap standard change. Copy, Bob. Chris, uh, 30 seconds is up if you want to try again. Obviously, we're going to defer to you here on what you think you want to do going forward, but it looks like you want to try the wrench again. Josh, on the outside of the bag, there is a large, small, adjustable tether and a small, small, adjustable tether. Copy, Bob. Inside of 
inside the bag is a lot of stuff. <laughs> there is a ret with a pit pin, a nine inch hex driver, and a scoop. Copy. There's a long duration tied on tether with an integral long uh, wire tie attached to it. Copy. Now at the 3BH fixture, Bob Pankin will go through the same procedures as Chris Cassidy, untightening the four bolts with the PGT and using the combo wrench and pliers to pry the fixture away from the GSE pad. On the top left bolt. The top right. Copy. What was the turn count on the first one? What was the turn count on the first one? A quarter turn. Copy. A full one to two. Sorry, Josh, do you want a full one to two turns on each of these or just to break the torque? And Bob, as long as the torque's broken, you're fine at a quarter, so we're good to keep going. Top right is broken. Chris, if uh, just before you leave, make sure that pitch knob is popped out for us. Yes. Copy. Firm block. I'll open the uh, thermal cover. Your go for that. We see uh, opening the thermal cover and still in the bag. Waste tether is closed and locked on the airlock B ring extender. Copy the, waste. Uh, crew hook side is closed and locked on my uh, right B ring extender. We copy, Chris. Good config. Hey Josh, I've got the ORU bag bundled to the APFR, and it's uh, the APFR is tethered to my BRT. I'm going to release the APFR, throw it on my BRT. We copy and concur, Bob.
Chris, I'm headed back inboard. Roger that. I am uh, here to the, uh, in a low pass manner to the airlock uranium center. Pop. Roger. Okay. I'm ready. Got it in the airlock. Hey, and I'll confirm one more time. On the airlock D ring extender, my waist tether is closed and locked on the on the big hook side and closed and locked on my right waist tether or uh, um, D ring extender on the crew hook side. I'm ready, Bob. Okay. And go ahead, Josh, for the next. Hey, affirmative. So, Bob, you're going to release Chris's anchor, and it's going to go to your red reel where the green hook is attached. Okay. Just for everybody's uh, awareness, I'm going to actually attach it to the waist tether that is attached to my suit. With the waist tether on there, there's not room for a, another hook on there. There is one final battery to be installed, a lithium-ion battery that is currently on the space station. The battery, it will be replacing, tripped last year and was rendered uh, and was needed to be disposed of, so it was replaced with nickel hydrogen batteries. Those will be removed and replaced by that lithium-ion battery in a future spacewalk. And Chris, just a comment on the camera without MLI. Our preference is that that one stays in the airlock just due to some thermal consids on it. No problem. I'm almost back with the other one, Chris. Okay, then I got you inside. This view of NASA astronaut Bob Behnken on his way to the airlock to meet up with Chris Cassidy. You can tell this is Behnken by the red stripes around the legs on his spacesuit. That designates him as EV-1 or the lead spacewalker for today. Today marks the 10th spacewalk for both Behnken and Cassidy. Mark, oh, are you back? Okay, I'm bringing back a medium. Concur. We can leave the medium outside, or does it need to go back to the airlock? And the astronauts have arrived at node three. You can see that end cone there. They will be removing and stowing the pressurized mating adapter cover. They will do some cable work and then tie back three axial shields. And Chris and Bob, uh, there's the three hour mark, three hours. We have seven hour PET available, limited by Medox. You can see we've regained video from the International Space Station. NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy on your right and Bob Behnken on your left at node three, or the end cone of the Tranquility module.
Their first task for this airlock preparation is to remove the PMA cover. That stands for Pressurized Mating Adapter. Can you guys hear me from inside? Yeah, I got you. Got you loud and clear, Doug. It looks like they're coming back. You just had a drop out of one and two. We should be coming back any minute. Happy. Nice to see you over there, Doug. You guys are looking good. That's the voice of NASA astronaut Bob Behnken, also on board the International Space Station, working from the inside today to support the spacewalk. Try them on three and see what they want you to do. Chris and Bob, we have two and an adjustable. Eight. Two adjustables released, is that right? That's correct. I'm ready to do this one, too. And that's just Velcro, right? Velcro. And that would be the voice of Doug Hurley inside the International Space Station. Bob Behnken is down and to the left in the suit with the red stripe around the legs. And just behind him to the left is the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM. This one to go. Okay, and I have one right in front of me, okay? Want me to do this one? Um, I want to do is see if there's any other Velcro that's all over it. Because I found a, you found one down there. I found two, here's another one. Yeah, here's another one as well. And Josh, are you back with us? And Bob, uh, sorry about that. It looks like we are back with you now. Sorry about that. Chris, for the words on that tieback, that we do shield three is going to be coming right on top of it. So as long as it's flat up against structure, we don't anticipate problems. Okay. In this view here, you have a great view, actually, of those shields that are about to be tied back by the astronauts. Your go to uh, remove it, Chris. You can see the numbers 2, 3, and 4. Cassidy and Behnken will work simultaneously on shields 2 and 4 to tie those back and into place. And then Cassidy will move on to tie back shield 3 with Behnken's help. This is all in preparation for the arrival of the NanoRacks airlock later this year. And Bob, we see you starting to wrap the wire tie around those three legs. Just a reminder to open up the flap uh, before you do end up pulling it all the way back. Copy. two tether extenders in preparation for the shield tiebacks. Okay. And the crew will be moving on to tying back those shields that you can see numbered there, two, three, and four. 
You also may have noticed it got darker outside the International Space Station. The station is flying 261 statute miles over the North Pacific Ocean in an orbital nighttime. The crew lost back. Copy. As our astronauts continue this work preparing for the future NanoRacks airlock, we are still accepting Ask NASA questions. So if you're watching live, uh, send us a tweet on Twitter with the hashtag AskNASA. This one from Haley asks, how does being underwater in the spacesuit at the NBL or Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory mimic the same concept as they do their actual spacewalks? You're onto something because being underwater is the closest we can get on Earth to experiencing weightlessness or microgravity. Being in the spacesuits underwater also allows the astronauts to understand how it feels to maneuver in the suit in that type of environment. First one, yeah. Okay. A bit of effort. The Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory is a 6.2 million gallon pool here at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. You got a red on it. All right, I am. Um... Actually, I think I'm supposed to be ready to the. You want to be ready to this out there? Yeah, let me. So. And that feather loop is also installed, and also on that nader loop is the grounding strap looped through strap. Copy, Chris. I'll uh, go down to the other one on the opposite side. Okay. And four, I guess. Yeah, four. I don't think there's not enough room for both of us right there. Yeah, I don't think so. See what you mean? The strap is wider than the yeah. block. What I ended up having to do was take my uh tin and poke. I'll poke it. Yeah, once the once you get it initially through that first hole and the first part of the strap, and then kind of bunched up, made a bunch up of the loop, and then once I got that opened, I kind of partially inserted the pin, and I was able to loop it around. Loop it around, yeah. Cassidy actually removing number three first. Relaying some best practices to Bob Benkin as he continues to work to release number four. The chick is not getting any of it into the wall on the other side. Right, exactly. That I was struggling with. Uh, Josh, do you want to 
do the tidying up, pinching up now on three, or should I? Do you guys prefer? Um, Chris, we're taking a look right now. It looks good to us in the camera, um, as long as you're content that uh, that it is is going to stay there. Uh, it does look good to us, and we're happy for you to move yeah. on. Uh, no, I'm not happy with it. I was just getting ready to cinch. I was wondering if you wanted to wait on cinching three or just kind of okay. Gotcha. No, go we're, yeah, we're go for you to cinch shield three. And uh, Josh, remind me where the handrail that's good for the LARC is. And Bobby or Broken, say it again. And that looks good on the right, Bob. As you can see, that uh, third axial shield has been tied back and down out of the way. Cassidy is now working on axial shield number two, while Binken continues working on number four. And Bob, those two lark snots look good to us. For Bob, we just want to cinch the lark snots up nice and tight so that they don't have any compliance. Okay. Captures the pit pen. Shield four. Copy, Bob. I'll try to cinch it up a little bit more, trying to be careful not to pull too hard on those um, handrails. 
Yeah, we concur. Another idea might go to, to a, be to go to a separate handrail, so one more radial outboard, so that the, the tether extender kind of opens up away from the shield at a wider angle. Hashtag up, uh, panel two. Big pins installed, two larks nuts installed with the tethers. The grounding strap is through one of the tethers. Quarter turn fastener is released, and I am moving my green hook before I put this down. We copy all, Chris. It's a good configure, ready to tie it back. And we see you working, Bob, just to confirm that we don't put the safety tether over, sorry, the Lark's tether over a safety tether. Is that how you want them? It's, a, it's looser here. But, uh... And Bob, we think Shield 4 is in a good config. It's hard for us to see. We just want to make sure that it, there's no chance of it, uh, that tether riding up and over onto the dog rail and then the shield coming up towards the stove pipe. But right now, we have the separation. Yeah, it, it can't come up over the dog rail because it's hooked to the uh, standoff. But I can't make it any snugger because of uh, uh, the reasons. Not long enough. reasons. Yeah, physics. Okay, if it can't come up over, that's the part where we're not able to see from here, then uh, we can curve. I think it's good. What it can do is flop a little bit, but it is what it is without a cinching mechanism. Yeah, the flopping is fine so long as it doesn't move inboard, but uh, I, I think it looks like it's in place good. Okay. I have one, too, that's kind of in between. Yeah, we see it. A good look at all three of those axial shields removed from the node three end cone and tied back out of the way, preparing that space for the future installation of the NanoRacks airlock. Okay. You have a GoPro too, Chris? Do, yeah, yeah. You want to just put it in half and go around here? Yeah. Um, I've only noticed one place on about this half that's uh, got a little bit of uh, something on it, like a, it's, it's got a little bit of relief to it near uh, the bolts. Um, Copy, Bob.
and Bob, can you take a stab at what that could possibly be? We're interested in whether or not it appears to be metal or uh, if it could be liquid or grease or something like that. I would hesitate to speculate what it could be without, you know, pushing on it a little bit. It looks like a speck. It's got a little bit of a shine to it, but a lubricant could do the same thing. Copy. Hey, Josh. For the lock, sorry. We're ready, Chris. There's four integral vets. Three of them are blank. One of them has uh, a two extender chain. There's a small, small vet. It's empty. Just to have the scoop, I believe. There's a vet to an adjustable with a wipe. And scraper. And then a ret to an adjustable with two wire ties. It's complete on the inside. And Chris, the inside of the bag looks good. Just let me know what's on the outside. Let me uh, do a little. Moving my own threat from that super. My green hose. Copy, Chris. Heading back. Roger. I'm passing up the airlock. You mean to do anything here, Chris? Uh, I don't think so. I'm just going to open the thermal cover, put this one in, and grab the, the real the real bag. Yeah. yeah. We copy, Bob. Go to translate for CP13. Copy. To see the spur. Roger. A rare view of the outside of the cupola module in this shot. You can see it up near the top of your screen with the numbers one and two on those windows. The cupola is essentially the bay window of the space station. We often get pictures from the astronauts taking photos of the Earth from the cupola, but we don't always get a view from the outside. Okay, we copy. I don't think there's much I can do with that. We copy and concur. Ask them for an extension cord. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how do you guys feel about shortcutting um, the cable instead of going around the circumference? Um, from this point, going diagonal a little bit uh, on the end cone. And that's, uh, hey, actually we're go on that plan. Okay. I don't know if that'll give us just a little bit. Yeah, it'll, it'll give us some. We, that question had been asked. We were waiting on an answer, but it sounds like we're go for that. So let's see if that gets the extra foot or two.
with sunset approaching, you can see NASA astronaut Bob Behnken. You can tell it's him with those red rings around the legs of his spacesuit. That designates him as Spacewalker 1 with the backdrop of our mega solar arrays. Both he and fellow spacewalker today, Chris Cassidy, are on their 10th spacewalk. I'm pointing the GoPro along the length of the cable. On the uh, port side, there is a strut or a cable tray of some sort that comes across. The cable goes underneath that into the original handrail. Uh, it was a tether to and then that original tether where it was holding the bundle is uh, still captive of the cable. And I basically had this shortcut. The astronauts' second task they accomplished today was the removal of the 1AH fixture. This scoop in there. This was first attempted on July 1st and was met with some trouble, but with the proper tools today, the astronauts were able to release those H fixtures for future power system upgrades. The other side has it. I see the gates closed. As Chris Cassidy removed that 1AH fixture, Bob Behnken worked to clean up the integrated electronics assembly from the previous three spacewalks. He then moved to the 3BH fixture and removed that smoothly as well. Roger. Both astronauts then made their way back to the airlock for a safety tether reset, preparing them for the next task. That task was preparation of Node 3's end cone, also known as Tranquility, for the attachment of the NanoRacks airlock later this year. The NanoRacks, NanoRacks airlock will arrive on a SpaceX rocket later this fall, and it will be the first commercial airlock on the space station. Colonel Binken. You can see the astronauts now heading into the airlock once again, but now because all of their tasks are complete. Right. I'm in. Copy. Transition to the airlock. Ring extender. Following the preparation of the Node 3 end cone, which included tying back three axial shields, both astronauts went on to route Ethernet cables. Chris Cassidy focused on the CP3 Ethernet cable while Benkin worked on routing the CP13 cable. He then also removed a lens filter from the CP13 area. My left waist tether is closed and locked to the air, air lock D ring extender. Copy that, Bob. Uh, with that, you can pick up your anchor, stow it on your mini workstation. Complete. And Bob, can we can we just and Bob, we just want to verify your the small hook of your waist tether is to your D ring extender locked. It is closed and locked. My D ring extender. Copy that. We'll pick the anchor up, ingress, and a reminder to have one final look at that pit pin as you go by it, please. And so, Bob, unable to see, but uh, you are going to close the thermal cover and attach the Velcro strap. And Bob Benkin is now also heading back inside the airlock with a go to close that thermal cover. Large 
Sorry, you bag is large now, isn't it? Yeah. And with the conclusion of today's spacewalk at 5 hours and 29 minutes, let's take a look at some spacewalk statistics. This was the 231st spacewalk in support of space station assembly and maintenance, the seventh this year. This, me this makes the fourth spacewalk for the Expedition 63 crew. It's the tenth spacewalk for Bob Behnken, and his total time spacewalking is 61 hours and 10 minutes. It's also the tenth spacewalk for Chris Cassidy, his total reaching 54 hours and 51 minutes. Today's spacewalk lasted 5 hours and 29 minutes, and of all spacewalking time across those 231 in support of station assembly and maintenance, that equals 60 days, 12 hours and 3 minutes of spacewalking time. Okay, copy that. Houston, if you can take care of step 4. Step four is in work. And airlock step four is complete, so at this time uh, the EV crew is no longer hot mic to the ground. We do still have your data and you're go to continue. That's the voice of NASA astronaut Anne McLean now serving as the CAPCOM for the crew now that they are back inside the International Space Station. And as they bring Cassidy and Behnken back and help them doff their suits, another look at the accomplishments of today's spacewalk. The spacewalk began when our astronauts switched their suits to internal battery power at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, 7.12 a.m. Eastern. The first task was the installation of the Robotics Tool Storage, also known as RITS, a storage unit outside the station that will provide thermal and physical protection for tools. After installing RITS and routing some associated cables, Cassidy moved on to remove the 1A H fixture. The H fixtures were used for ground processing solar arrays prior to launch, but needed, needed to be removed for future power upgrades. The first attempt to remove these was on the July 1st spacewalk. With no luck on that day, the astronauts returned today and were able to more easily release those fixtures. As Cassidy removed the 1AH fixture, Bob Behnken worked to clean the integrated electronics assembly area after the last three spacewalks in that location. He then moved on to remove the 3BH fixture, another one of those necessary for removal for future power system upgrades. Once those tasks were complete, the astronauts headed back to the airlock for a safety tether reset. This prepared them for their next task, NanoRacks airlock preparation. The NanoRacks airlock will be the first commercial airlock, and it will launch on a SpaceX rocket later this fall. Our astronauts headed out to the Node 3, or Tranquility, end cone. Here they removed they tied back three axial shields, preparing that space for the future airlock to be installed once it arrives later this year. After completing the work at the Node 3 area, both astronauts moved on to some cable routing. Chris Cassidy routed the CP3 Ethernet cable, while Bob Behnken focused on the CP13 cables. 